Uh, good afternoon. It's great to be here. I'm going to talk to you about uh, information discovery today. But before we dive into that, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. And uh, a few words about myself that I forgot to include in my slides. I'm a Master of Science in Economics from Obo Academy, and I have been a researcher for one year back in 1996. After that, that I was pulled strongly by the dark side, so I've been a serial entrepreneur since that. And uh, at Etsimo, we help people learn new things. We do that by making it easy for them to discover relevant content, relevant information, relevant data in any content repository. We are, as, as was already told, a spin-out from the University of Helsinki. And there is a little bit of a longer story behind that. Uh, basically, the technology that we're using is uh, researched at uh, HEAT, Helsinki Institute for Information Technology, which is partly the University of Helsinki and partly Aalto. What we do is something that we like to call cloud-based visual content discovery. Cloud-based is, of course, uh, the fact that we are based in a cloud. We live in, in the Amazon cloud in Ireland presently. And uh, we use intent modeling, which is a strange word, but that means that we use artificial intelligence and machine learning to predict what the user is trying to search for. That's the first part. The second part is that the search results are then visualized for the user to look at, to, to react uh, upon. And by doing so uh, with human computer interaction, we recalculate the intent model and the search or discovery process becomes more of an ongoing activity than, than a normal search. Uh, the technology took three years to, to perfect. Uh, it was sponsored by Tekes, Academy of Finland, the universities, and so on. And uh, we have two pending patents. And a third we're going to file, hopefully, within next week. Uh, there is basically, well, if I <coughs> exaggerate a little, there are six of us. Uh, two of us work full time, four of us are, are scientists, and they work part, partly at the universities and partly, partly for Etsimo. And we're partly owned also by the University of Helsinki fund, funds and, and uh, TECAS is sponsoring some of our development. But for you to understand what I'm actually going to try to tell you and show you, I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about how uh, discovery uh, differs from traditional searching. So when you do a traditional searching, you use something called, we call a query response model or lookup searching. So basically, you enter a few key keywords, you press a button, and you get some results. In this case, the search that you're doing, it's captured only in the initial query. After you have put in your keywords and pressed your button, the only way to get a better set of results is to tweak your keywords and press the button again. Another thing that is <coughs> normal in these cases is that the most important hits are high up on the list. Depending on where you're searching, the importance can be determined by what everybody else is looking for, what you have been looking for before, or who has been paying a lot of money to get the results up top. The other thing that is, well, expl explanatory for this is that uh, you get the result lists spanning several pages. And I don't think many of you go beyond, beyond page five or, or even page seven. And if you, God forbid, want to use advanced search features, you will notice that they are complicated. The strange thing is that uh, this works. It does. If you know what you're looking for, if you know where to look for it, and if you know how to formulate the query you need to be able to find it, then it works perfectly. But if you don't know what you're looking for, if you want to learn new things, then it's harder. Or if you, even, even harder if you want to look for, for unusual findings. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld, if it was him or his speechwriters, he has said at least one good thing. He's been talking about uh, unknown unknowns, which means basically that uh, you normally know what you know. You also know what you don't know. But sometimes you stumble up upon something that you didn't even know that you didn't know. So we can find these two. 
And why doesn't it work normally when you try to use regular tools to, to find stuff? Well, you need to know the, the topic area, the domain, to be able to search effectively. You need to know the sources where the best information can be found, and you need to know the vocabulary to use when you're searching. So if you're not familiar with the domain, then you have a gap between your current knowledge and the knowledge that you want to acquire. And that makes it harder, at least in the beginning, to start searching effectively. Due to that, it's hard to get the query right the first time, or the second time, or the 15th time. You either get, uh, uh, let's say, 100,000 hits, which is too much, and then you tweak it a little and you get zero hits, and then you're unhappy and you go back and forth and you try to get it to work. And uh, as you do that, you get trapped within the initial query. If you have entered a, a bunch of keywords, you can never get out of that query. You can narrow it down by filtering so that you get a smaller and smaller and more manageable set of, of, of hits. But you can never discover anything outside the query with that query. And if you are looking at a big and broad topic area, it's re really hard to, to, to uh, formulate a big picture in your head without using external tools and, and making a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet to try to capture the information so that you can grasp it. And then we have the information bubble, which is hard to break, which means that uh, popularity ranked hits are ranked highest and, and you get the same stuff everybody else is looking for. So to really prove my point, suppose you're an expert in a certain domain and you want to learn something new. And if you know your domain, and you can, you can query it, you can query anything you know, but what do you do? How do you query for something that you don't know about? If you use your regular keywords, you will basically get all the hits that you have looked through uh, previously, and you just go through them again and see if you learn something new, and that's not a solution. I have a demo that I'm going to show you. I'm stupid enough to show you a live demo in a situation like this. And I'm going to show you two scenarios. The first one is uh, I know what I want to find, but I have trouble formulating it. And for that, I'm going to disrespect my mother, but she knows it, so she's OK with it. And the other one is, is navigating the information space uh, at speed of thought, basically. So I have uh, available here the complete English Wikipedia. Uh, there are basically 5 million articles in it uh, indexed. It uh, amounts to 35 million documents. And uh, you can use it afterwards or when, whenever you want at wikipedia.etsimo.com. And the interface I'm going to show you can look completely different depending on the use case. So now I'm going to try to find the browser, which is there. Yes, I think I have it. <coughs> you don't have a mouse here, no? No, unfortunately. OK, OK. Okay, and I almost succeeded. Mm -hmm. Just one typo. And again. Mm -hmm. No, no niin. Okay. Mä laitan sen tonne. All right, the picture could be darker, but it's not. So basically what we have here, over here, is what we call an intent radar. The intent radar will show the keyword and the predictions uh, of the search that you're trying to, to, to perform. So you start by entering keywords just like any normal search engine. You will get results here, and the results will have keywords, and the keywords will be pictured in the yellowish area, the striped area here. And around that, you will have something that we call future intents, which are basically uh, possible search directions if you didn't manage to get the query right the first time. So as I said, disrespecting my mother, she can never remember the first name of Steve Jobs. So she would look for Steve Jobs by just typing in Jobs. And uh, <coughs> as Jobs is a, what the? I, I think it refreshes okay. the page okay. every time you press the button. 
then I shouldn't use the yes. button. <laughs> Excellent. So basically, jobs is a word that can mean many things. And the best prediction based on just that word is that it's related to, to employment. And employment has several different subtopics. It can be re regarding uh, job hunting over here. It can be about uh, job satisfaction over here. We can easily slide into psychology. Uh, we can also slide into religion. We find Job, who is a biblical figure. He has a book in the Bible. We have the boss in the basement and so forth. And when we continue going through the keywords, looking for whatever it was that we wanted to, to look for. One second. Thank you. We find Steve Jobs over here. So that was what we were looking for. So we take him and we pull him towards the bullseye. And by doing so, we tell the system that, okay, it wasn't just Jobs, it was actually Steve Jobs. And what we did now, uh, we actually recalculated the whole intent model. We did some 3 billion calculations over in Ireland. And we have a new keyword cloud and intent model containing much more of Steve Jobs and Apple-related things than we had with just Jobs. The best hit currently is the film about Steve. If we don't care about the film, we can find the keywords for jobs, the film, and we can pull them out of the radar. And we can then look at the results again. And now we have the list of, of books about Steve Jobs and the, the, art, the article himself. And this is what I would call a surgical solution because we don't have the whole Wikipedia underneath. We just have it indexed. So if I click on a result, it goes to the original location. So that was my demo number one, knowing what I want to find, but I don't know how to express myself. The second one is uh, me being jealous of the guy owning the Tesla in the parking lot. So I tried to find out more about Tesla, so I entered Tesla as my search word. I find out that there is a physicist called Nikolai Tesla, who is the best hit according to the machine based on the data in Wikipedia. I can also find a, a heavy rock band called Tesla. I can find Nikolai Tesla's unit for magnetism or something, and so forth. And then I find Tesla Motors there. Uh, when I read about Tesla Motors, my interest might expand or shift towards the CEO that I find out that is, is actually running the company named Elon Musk. So basically, Elon Musk uh, is here. So if I want to learn more about Elon Musk, I pull that one towards the center. And by doing so, I tell the machine that my initial query was about Tesla, but I shifted a little bit towards Elon Musk, and it remembers that I started with Tesla. So it's actually picking out Tesla and Elon Musk over here. If I continue reading this, I will also find out that they use different battery technologies or have tried different ones and they have settled for lithium ion batteries. So if I take those ones or the keywords for that and, and pull that toward the center, I get lithium ion batteries with a flavor of Tesla in, in the search. So I can search for things that basically connect Tesla, Elon Musk and lithium ion batteries. What I've been doing here semi-secretly is that I've been pressing the save button here. So every time I find something interested, interesting, I can put it in in a shopping basket and, and read later or share or, or email to my friends. So that was basically the demo I was going to show you. Now I need to find my slides again. Yes, moving on. So the technology that we have that has been researched, among other places here, it's completely data driven. So we don't need taxonomies, ontologies, hierarchies, knowledge graphs or anything. We just need keywords and a full text index. The magic is done by artificial intelligence and machine language. We create ad hoc connections in the data depending on the user's behavior. So every search basically starts from scratch and the machine learns itself how you want to search while you're searching. And in this way, it's completely transparent. So the user is directing the search. The machine is telling the user what it thinks about the search and what the user wants to find. So it's basically educating the user about the information space. The user, again, is educating the machine of, of, of the user's intent and giving feedback. And we have the loop going on. So 
basically the human is doing what the human does best, which is logical reasoning, and the machine is doing th what the machine does best, which is retrieving and processing billions of documents in nanoseconds. Due to the fact that we don't need to have the data in any specific or spe special structure, this is very, very good for combining different data sets and breaking silos. And as I showed you in the demo, when I clicked on the link, it went back to the original location. So if we would have all the research papers in the world, all the patents, all the corporate information and stuff, we could also link back to, to all the original sources and not break anything. We've run, or actually the researchers have, but I'm going to still tell you about it. We've run some usability tests. And they are actually, uh, well, they were the same test, but two different outcomes, so to speak. Uh, we had a bunch of uh, uh, students, postdoc students, and uh, uh, two topic areas. One was machine vision, the other one I can't unfortunately remember. And we had professors selecting from 60 million documents the 10 best articles for each topic. And then we gave the users or the test groups uh, the task to find, or half the group was, was to find as many of the good documents they could for an academic paper using a normal text-based search. And the other half was using a visual discovery system. Basically, those who used the visual discovery system, they performed 109% better. That tells you nothing, but basically, if you have 10 documents that you wanted to find, uh, with the text-based system, you find found 4.4, and with the di visual discovery system, you find over 9 on average. So it's significantly better, and you find much more relevant data. And the overall performance for non-novel information was 57%. The other interesting thing that we learned was that uh, when you present interesting information, relevant information to people, they engage with the information in a completely different way. They start exploring, they start going through it. So they basically interacted with the search results almost four times more than they do with a regular result list that is just text-based. And this resulted in, in more than two times more pages viewed. So what we have been doing is that we have been building a prototype on, on 60 million scientific publications. It's the whole Thomson Reuters web of science, a uh, big part of Springer, and then some, some parts of, of ACM and IEEE. Unfortunately, because it's Thomson Reuters data, I can't show it to you, and I can't make it publicly available yet, but we're working on that. We have the Wikipedia demo. That is just a demo. It's not perfect, and it's not going to be perfect, but it's just a showcase. Uh, we are working with the current research information system repository of the University of Helsinki, and we're going to have that go live in a few weeks. So on the research page in the University of Helsinki's website, there will be a link to this, and you can go through the, the research papers, scientific publications that have been published on, at the University of Helsinki. We're also working uh, with the library at the University of Helsinki. This is going to take a little bit longer before we can go live on that because the data amount and the different sources contents are, are large. Uh, we're building a pilot with the Association of the American University Presses and the National Academies Press. It's going to be cool, I hope. And uh, we're also working with the OCLC, which is the Online Computer Library Center, uh, which is kind of an umbrella organization for Originally, there are libraries in the States, but there are also members from around the world. And uh, with the Finnish Medical Society, we're building a, a, a radar-based search for their medical student learning material. And on top of that, uh, we're working with Montevidenius, the father of MySQL, to, to have some open source uh, search capabilities available for open source projects, which be basically means that open source projects can upload their manuals and knowledge bases and so forth, and their users can, can uh, use this to, to search for free for information that interests them. But I think I'm almost out of time. So wrapping it up, visual discovery delivers really, really good results. Uh, the, the normal lookup searching methods are extremely efficient as well. 
Uh, you can just look at how well Google is doing. Uh, and that, uh, that is because when you know what, what you're looking for, that is the tool to use. Uh, exploratory searching, which is basically what I've been talking about. Uh, in this case, discovering information that you might not even know that you were looking for and, and exploring topic areas and so forth. It doesn't compete with lookup searching because the use case is different. With lookup searches, you use your browser or the internet as your extended memory. And uh, with exploratory searching, you're trying to learn something new. So basically, no, when you use appropriate tools when you do exploratory searching, you can give, get, get very much better results than when using Google. And if you're into revenue, uh, better findability means that uh, the customers get more relevant stuff, they are happier, they stay longer, and the conversion rate go up, and uh, the page views go up, and, and uh, everybody's happy. So basically that concludes my stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So we have maybe time for a very quick question. So any questions from the audience? I'm getting off easy today. Yeah, I, I could actually ask. Well, Ella, yes. So at, at the moment, do you have any open software already released? No, we do not. We don't. And I'm not sure that we are going to in the near future. We're we're thinking about it, but uh, the university has put in a lot of money in patenting this and so forth, so we need to do it in a controlled manner. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the Vading example was a very good one for, for how you can succeed with being open source as well. Yes, there's another question. Um, have you considered to apply your search to linked open data because that would readily be indexed and linked, it would fit very well, and the search engines there are currently mostly abysmal or, or not working. What did you say was linked open? Linked open data. That was news to me. No, I haven't. I haven't, but I will. I will write that down. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> <laughs>